Well, the weather across the country continues to be really warm this week. In fact, above average temperatures expected for the next several days. And some of you will actually get some snow. It's going to be out west, though, into the mountains. And there are some big changes taking shape in the Arctic. Week over week, we've seen a lot more snow. And I think that will really cause a couple of things. We'll get into that a little bit later. Thanks for watching the video today, guys. I'm Travis Roberts. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. A lot of new folks coming over to the channel. We've just passed 8,000 subscribers here on this small YouTube channel, so thanks for watching. I'm a former TV chief meteorologist that is not in the business anymore. I, uh, I, I'm out of television, but I love forecasting, especially this type of forecasting, winter forecasting, which can always be complicated, and it's getting a little less complicated out west. I think we're going to see some snow here. Some of it could really add up. And let me tell you, watch out here uh, into the coastal ranges of British Columbia, into the Canadian Rockies, and the northern Rockies here into the U.S. too. I think some snow will add up, not just through next week, but, but beyond that too. So we're going to get several systems here, and we're starting to build the snowpack too up into parts of Canada. Let's look at what's going on here at the surface. High pressure starting to lose its grip across the east coast. That's starting to push out to sea. We've got Oscar down here in the Caribbean, swinging through the Bahamas now, expected to stay here. Here's a quick look at that track, really bringing it through the Bahamas and then out to sea, very close to Bermuda as we head toward the end of the week. Here's what we're looking like across the East Coast, dry still. We could use some rain in many of these areas, really. I mean, it's kind of hard to imagine, right? We just had all that rain with Helene, uh, and now we're dry. Um so it's good for the cleanup efforts, but maybe bad, especially in the parts of the Midwest where it's been quite a while since we've had some rain here. This system that's swinging through the Great Lakes will continue to push off to the east, bringing some rain here, some snow into Canada, and some colder air does move in behind it. Out west, another system moves in. That's going to bring more rain and snow here uh, across the northern Rockies, and then that kind of fizzles out. Now, as we head toward the weekend, things do start to dry out in the northeast, We've got this easterly flow. That's going to be fairly persistent here in Florida. I think that keeps the clouds around, also the showers. And then some return flow here, bringing some moisture back north. Maybe a few showers for parts of Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan. This is going to be kind of a moisture-starved system, a two, uh, sort of like what we're seeing now. So not a lot of rain expected out of this. That's fall, right? Typically these fall systems don't have a lot of moisture. And then Cool Canadian high pressure building in behind that. That's going to continue to push off to the south. This one's a little stronger, so uh, it's going to push some cooler air, I think, down here into the northeast. It's not going to make it all the way down into Florida. In fact, it'll probably just kind of settle in here to the northeast. So this is looking pretty cold here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday into the northeast. Well, meanwhile, another system slams into the west coast, and this, this is the pattern that's setting up, and I'm going to show you why I think this might stick around. Now here on the other side of this trough, a big ridge here across the central and uh, really the eastern United States that's starting to build in by the time we move now into Monday and Tuesday. And now we've got above average temperatures soaring north into Canada, almost all the way to the Hudson. That's the Hudson Bay. And this is an impressive looking storm as we head into next Tuesday and next Wednesday. That could bring some significant snow, I think, for the Rockies again into parts of the mountains like the San Juans, the Wasatch. This one might drop a little bit further to the south, so do we get a little more snow in New Mexico? I mean, we've had the storms recently, right, and some snow there, but this one may be a little colder. And another system here into the Midwest possible as we end out in the month and then start into November. Really, we're at the point now things kind of go haywire. The last couple of model runs has tr tried to develop something here, going back one model run. A totally different look. So we're still way too early to be looking at November 1st. But things usually get stormy about this time of year, and I think that's what we're starting to see. A closer look out west, and then we're going to head to the northeast too. We still got to talk about what's going on in the Arctic. So that's coming up. So hold on just a second because I want to show you this next system that will be driving uh, into the northwest. We're dry here into the Intermountain West, but this is going to bring some heavy snow into, again, the coastal ranges of British Columbia up into the Canadian Rockies. And then... Behind this system, once this area of low pressure swings by and the front swings through, snow levels are going to drop. We may push some snow down into the Sierra. I don't know that it makes it that far south, at least the moisture. But some snow looks a little more likely than it did a couple of days ago. And then this will push here into the Intermountain West. So now we're talking about, again, Utah, Colorado. And it stays cold out here and unsettled as we head through Tuesday and Wednesday of next week with another storm moving in. This is just a closer look at it. Uh, across the east, though, this this is the area that uh, really could use some rain. Many of these places here from 
central Illinois, central Indiana, really all of this area here could could probably use a little rain, but unfortunately it doesn't look like any really is going to be falling until maybe Friday, Saturday. There could be some uh, maybe even moving south into parts of Virginia, West Virginia, and then that kind of settles down as we head into uh, the weekend, into next week. Across the Northeast, take a look at this. This would be by next Monday and Tuesday. I want to show you this because as that cold front moves through, this cold area of high pressure builds in, and these are your highs on Monday. So we're talking about 20s and 30s for northern parts of Maine, 30s and 40s. But look, it'll be cold as we wake up Monday morning with lows upper teens, lower 20s. It won't last, though, because look, even as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday, numbers head back up, so we're above average by the middle part of next week. Snowpack still building here across the continent as winter starts to be felt in the northern tier anyway. This is what I talked about in my last video, and I want to hit this again because we're seeing these storms just pound the west coast. You've got that colder water here into, uh, again, really from the Bering Strait all the way south here to the Aleutians, and then some warmer than average water here. Generally, wherever you set up that that thermal gradient is where you're going to see storms form. And it looks like, I think that's what we're going to see. And that would mean bigger troughs that swing through as the storms wrap up with that difference in temperature. And we've seen that in the last couple of runs with those storms moving into the West Coast. Check this out. This is snowpack across the Northern Hemisphere, looking down from the North Pole. I'm going to show you this. This would be last Tuesday, and I'm going to skip ahead to today. Last Tuesday, today. So we're definitely seeing some more snow. Just to see that again, I'll take it all the way back to the 4th to now. So we're dumping that snow. That is what you need to really continue to just build that snowpack uh, and keep that cold air bottled up here. And it's one of the reasons, too, that I think we're starting to see that polar vortex just get stronger and stronger Again, we're dumping the snow here. And remember that temperature difference I talked about here? Look how stormy it is. One, then another storm moves out of Asia into that, really that thermal gradient zone, if you will, here just south of Alaska. And boom, 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 the storms are just forming. So I got to think that this is going to be active. And that would mean potentially a very active start to winter across the Pacific Northwest as we move through fall. Just my thoughts. Look at the snowfall we're expecting here over the next couple of days. This would take you out through the end of the month. Big snows piling up here into British Columbia, and I think even here from the Cascades south. But I think that's actually going to lead to more snow here for the northern Rockies too. So a, a, long, a long way to go with winter. I think overall the winter will be warmer than normal for the east. I mean, I know a lot of folks don't want to hear that, but we're clearly seeing that cold air here across the west coast with those storms and I think it's because of that thermal gradient here that's set up with warmer than average temperatures looking long term on the European weeklies at least from the central United States and I gotta think if it's warm here that's probably going to be a little warmer to the east too it doesn't mean we won't have winter storms it's just at least for the next month or so I think temperatures are going to stay above average in the central and eastern U.S. below average out west all right not a lot of change since the last video but if you want to stay updated, subscribe, come back. Thanks to all of you who have done so. See you next time.